blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now.
Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are seeing what God says you are? You see what God says you are? Are you seeing what God says you are? Yes. How many of you had come boldly say I'm what God says I am? Colin, are you one of them? Can't you say it? Take your microphone and say it. How many of you know you are what God says you are? Amen. I am what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I'm a winner. I'm not a loser. I'm what God says I am. That's my prayer for everybody in England. That's my prayer for everybody in the world. That no matter how the world change and things change, you and I should believe we are what God says we are. We are the head, we are not the tail. We are the healers and not the sick. We are the losers and not the bound. We are what God says we are. Good morning. Good morning. I say good morning. Good morning. Please be seated. Thank you very much. Ezekiel chapter 36. The words of efficacy to become your daily language. Prayers are said by many of us when there's need for it. Faith is gotten by some of us when things are tragic and about to happen to us and we don't know where to turn to, then we try to see if faith is at home. Then we knock at his door. Faith, how are you? Many times when you need him at that time, he's not at home. Wellness. It's occasioned an occasion in many lives. Act of joy and happiness is not the daily routine in our lives because it has not become part of our daily living. And I'm here this morning by the grace of God to share this with you that we can make happiness outside happening and we can make joy our daily way of living whether we are poor or rich well or sick I want to take us through the scripture this morning as I studied the word of God this last week about this time last Sunday we are looking for weird, we were turning away 23,000 people with over 50 federal policemen trying to help us control the crowd they were in depot. Everybody want to hear what I wanted to say last Sunday. And this message is what I preached. Part of what I preached. Learning how to talk like God. Saying things the way God says it. Looking at things the way God looks at it. So that it will not be once a while when you are in trouble before you say, Oh God! Jesus didn't do that. The prophets didn't do that. The apostles didn't do that. Christ became the language of their mouth. Faith was their daily talk. Action. Language of life. The Bible said the tongue is a small member of the body. But out of the tongue comes words of life. And as I study the scripture, I find that many, many times you find people, those of us who are Christian, we buy books like Power in the Tongue, How to Use Your Tongue, The Power of the Tongue, written in America, written here in England. But how to make it become our own language? I want to ask you, what is the language of the Englishman? I beg your pardon. Stand up and be bold. What's the English language? What is the language of an Englishman? English. What's the language of a German? German. 
What is the language of a Dutch? Dutch. Pardon? Dutch. What is the language of the Jews? <laughs> Hebrew. Is that correct? <laughs> Hebrew. Hebrew is the language of the Jews. The language of the Arabs? Arabic. Arabic. Isn't it? What is the language of an American? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> English, American. American English. American. I mean, English. English. Say English. English. It doesn't matter what angle they handle it, how they handle it. English is English. Yes. Now, what's your own language as a Christian? Faith language. That is the biggest trouble I've been trying to see how I can come in into the lives of the black Americans. 200 years ago, they lost their language and tribe. So you see a black American and say, hi. What's the meaning of hi? Hi. It means nothing. Hi. And many Christians don't know they have language. We want to try today to see how we can rediscover our language. For example... God said to Moses, when they ask you who sent me, he, God said, say. That's training. At home in Nigeria, when we give birth to a baby, say that I know you are not used to this. We are back to it again. Of course, you know that happened when I'm here. When we give birth to a child at home, you teach the baby how to say papa, mama. Do you do that in English? Yeah. Now, if your child is sent to nursery school, you don't start that child from university educational system. You teach the child A, B, C. We have what we call slate. Little blackboard, small, for children. You write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The first figure every child learns is 10. And all figure on earth from here to eternity ends at 10. After 9, you get 0. I hope all of you know that one. <laughs> no matter how smart you are, 9 is the last figure. After nine is zero, you have to begin to add things to it to make it one million, two trillion. But nine is the last language of figures. Now, if, if you want to teach a child A, B, C, D, you teach him A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, O, S, T, Y, Z. It's long. Some of you read that last. You don't even know where peace appears and where Z is in English. But you don't teach a child in university algebra and teach a child in university geometry. You don't teach an elementary child medical mathematics. No. You teach a little child A, B, C, D. Many times you ask a child to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. He says 1, 9, 10, 12. Sometimes they say one, two, three, seven, ten. They tell you that you are happy that they are learning something, isn't it? Yes. But nobody has sat us down to teach us A faith, B belief, C commitment. We have not we have not learned that. So we come to a life of adult Christianity without knowledge of what to do when trial comes. I taught people how to talk. How to talk when you have no money in your pocket. How to talk when you are not well. Because sickness doesn't have mouth. It's you and I when we are sick that say I'm sick. But sickness doesn't say I'm here. Sickness keep quiet. You advertise him. <laughs> how many of you know what I'm talking? When there's no food in your stomach, does the belly say I'm hungry? Belly gives you sign, but your mouth says it. Am I in the wrong school this morning? If there's no food here, have you ever heard from here? I'm hungry. <laughs> Has your belly ever said that? What says it for you? Your mouth. But the sign given by the belly makes mouth say it. Isn't it? When your body is not well, does sickness say, I'm here? My name is sickness, I'm in your body? Who says I'm not well? You. It's you. It's you who says, I'm down. When you say, <laughs> you say, I'm coughing. 
Cough doesn't say, I'm here inside you. You say it for cough. You say it for hunger. You say it for depression. You say it for sorrow. Those languages we learn to say when things are contrary and adversarially in our lives, we can use the same tongue to learn the A, B, C, D of faith and say, yes, I am not well, but he's the Lord that he let me. That is still in the Bible. I'm hungry and I'm poor, but my God will still supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I know from my experience, devil has never come to my house and stood six foot exactly, 190 pounds, and said, my name is devil. I stand for him anytime he's in my house. I know you are, you are not going to believe that. Have you ever seen a man knock at your door and say, my, my name is devil, I'm in your house, Peter? No. It's you who imagine how he looks like and describe him and tell people, the devil is attacking me. And in heaven, one day, the devil is going to tell God, I never saw that man. <laughs> many, many people have told lies against the devil. When they fail, devil made me do it. When they steal, devil made me do it. And devil say, I wasn't even home when you stole. You stole and used my name for it so that the world will say you are good. Why can't we use the same language we use to portray the devil, to portray Christ, so that Jesus in us can look good as he is to the world? That's what I want us to do this morning. In Genesis chapter 1, we start from there. Read me verse 2. Genesis 1 2. Can somebody read that loud? Verse 2 again. And the earth was without form and void. And what? All right, read me verse 3. And God did what? Yes. And God did what? Yes. Is that in your Bible? Yes. God did what? Said. Yes. Said what? Yes. And what happened to life? Yes. God said what? Yes. And what happened to light? Yes. Was there light? Yes. All right. Let's look at the scripture. Go to chapter 1, verse 3. And God said, let there be what? Light. And there was what? Light. Now in arithmetic, I mean in English language, if you do examination, let there be and there was, you fail. There can be let there be, request, and past tense was, but in faith, that's correct. God applied for what was there and what was there appeared before he applied for it. And it came to pass. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. Verse 3. God said, let there be light. There was light. Verse 6. God said, are you following me? Yes. Let there be what? Firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the water from the waters. Verse 9. And God said. Verse 11. And God said. Verse 14. And God said. Follow me. Be quick with your Bible. Jehovah's Witnesses are very fast. Verse 20. And God said. Verse 24. And God said. Verse 26. And God said. Verse 29. And God said. Every time God wants to let something happen, what did God say? He said something. When darkness took over the whole world, God didn't stand two million feet tall, one and a half million feet wide, and one million feet deep, and nodded his head.
Immediately God saw darkness. God said what? Let there be light. Do your hand like that. Let there be light. Point your finger. Let there be light. And there was what? Light. Counteracting the expectation of the enemy. Fighting the situation you didn't want to happen to you. Telling darkness, go back. Jesus was in the ship. And the Bible says in Mark 4, and there arose a great tempest. And Jesus stood up and rebuked the storm and the wind and said, that's what the Bible said. And he said, peace, say that to everybody. Be still. What happened to this, to this troublesome water? The Bible said there was what? Great calm. Great calm. Jesus landed. Jesus learned how to talk like his father. Moses came before the bank of the river, the Red Sea. Two million or three million Pharaoh's army behind, resting in the front. Moses raised his head up. And what did God say? Why criest thou to me? Why are you telling me something instead of telling the situation? Say to the Red Sea, stretch your rod, part the Red Sea. Moses stretched his rod, the Red Sea parted. We are given power to do something about something that is not moving the way we want it to be. And it's called the language of faith. We are given the right. On Friday, day before yesterday, and yesterday morning, I was teaching in the church two times I preached yesterday before I flew last night. I said, how many of you know that cost of living is rising very high in Nigeria, not in England? Cost of living is very high now. You know that? I'm talking in Africa, not here. Everything is free in England, isn't it? <laughs> you get free house. Do you pay for it? Do you buy your house here in England? Yes. You pay for it? John Major doesn't give you house free? No. I'm surprised. I, I'm going to ask him. <laughs> what of Queen Elizabeth? It doesn't give you Buckingham Palace free? No. Loaf of bread in the store. Do you buy it or you pick it? No, no. When you go to a store, do you pay for bread? Yes. You don't pick it and put it in your bag? No. What will happen if you pick it and you didn't pay? <laughs> Pardon? What would, they, what would they say you have done? In England? Yes. They are not as kind? <laughs> I thought if you took three loaves, they add two more to it. They don't give it to you free. What of clothes store? You pick, did you buy this suit or you picked it from the store? You paid, unfortunately. Oh, Lord. You bought it. I thought they only sell for us who come from Africa. I thought once you are white, you just enter a store, you white it. You pay for it. Is it as cheap now as it was 20 years ago? More expensive now than 20 years ago. All right. So it's getting dearer, isn't it? It's getting more costly now than before. Cost of living is more now. Cost of car is more now. Cost of everything is more now. Get ready for the worst. I told him at home yesterday, you either believe and live or doubt and die. Because things will not be cheaper. But see how God handled things. In the month of Christmas at home, I don't know about England. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com.
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. December, the last few weeks. But you know what God does when it comes to that very expensive month? Every store you go, joy to the world, the Lord is born. Is that, do they sing that in England? Yes. Choir, have you ever tried it before? Joy to the world, the Lord is born. Sing like choir. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing. He ruled the world with truth and grace. Last year you sang it loud. is born. Do you sing it like that? God says no matter how costly, joy to the world. Let earth receive God calms our nerves when prices get very calm. <laughs> Every store, including those who don't go to church, you go to a restaurant, joy to the world, pay what you are charged. <laughs> Nobody has time to look at the price when God says joy to the world. The king is born. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Nothing will be cheaper on earth until Jesus come. The reason is very simple. We are approaching the second coming of the most high. Jesus is the highest. So whenever price goes up, Jesus says, come along. High come, I'm the most high. You can't catch me up. But what do you do when things are more than your ending? When your bill is higher than your income. When your money is going down, your bill is piling up. You learn how to sing a song. God is in charge. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So every situation, every condition, God is teaching his people. Learn how to handle it. When your body is reacting contrarily to your expectation of health, learn to stand and say, you foul spirit of sickness. Say that everybody. You foul spirit. Say it loud. You foul 
I command you in the name of Jesus lose your grip and hold take your hands from God's property for by his stripes I'm healed stand up and say it you foul spirit of sickness I adjure you in the name of Jesus lose your grip and hold from God's property by his stripes I'm healed did you say it well? That's how you get well. Not when you ask for two pillows to add to three. You don't get well when you add more pillows to pillows. Pillow plus pillow equals to double sickness. Faith to challenge equals to recovery. When you learn to talk like God talks. The storm before Jesus. The disciple woke him up. Hello! Master, why are you sleeping when we are dying? Jesus did not rise and say, Alas, God, we are dead. Are you listening to me? Please remain standing. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Alas to you is not our last card to Christ. He doesn't join you. Alas, alas. When you say, Alas, Master, get us down not or we perish. Jesus says, Tom, I was sleeping and you were busy. Now that I'm standing, you go down. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Nothing panics him like we do. Nothing makes him react the way we act when things go against us. When you are driving and somebody swerves from his right to your side. Oh! Jesus doesn't say, oh! Jesus said, peace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Anytime this man is driving me, I thought he was the worst driver in England until this man drove me today and I said, I told Dr. Medro on the phone, I said, I don't know where we are, but all the side of the road is flowing like sea. <laughs> Have you ever been in a car when you are very close to the edge of the road and the whole leaves look like a river? That's what I saw today when this man was taking me from London. The whole side, all the leaves became river flowing. Ooh, ooh. I said, we are getting there in the name of Jesus. <laughs> oh, yes. I thought my drivers drove fast in, at home. But this man was flying low. <laughs> so every time I saw a car in the front, I said, watch it. He said, we're okay, we're okay. I said, Lama Hako Sorod. Yeah, that, yeah. Oh, yes. And we got here. I said, we got here. We got here. Sometimes you carry people when you are driving fast, they have more brakes than you who is driving. Have you ever picked anybody like that? They hold brake, go. Cool. It's just like watching football match. Hey, go, go, go! No! You are not playing, but you are scoring more goals than those who are playing. Is that, do you, have you ever seen that before? I've gone to a football field. Somebody next to me scored more goals than the players. But listen to this. How do you and I respond to challenges of life that are real? What do we say? I'm going to give you two surprising testimonies before I let you sit down. It helps when you are sitting down. You are too used to a comfortable chair. It, it helps. It helps when you know what to say. Sit down. Ezekiel chapter 36. Well, I've been able to establish to you that when things are not going the way they ought to go, God does not keep quiet. How many can say amen? amen. God says something. God says something. Listen to Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 1. Also thou son of man. Prophesy unto the mountains of Israel. The word here is mountains of what? Israel. And say, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord. I emphasized this in Benin yesterday, Dr. Reed. When mountains are more than your personal mountain, 
Nigeria, we have political mountains, military mountains, cost of living mountains, educational system mountains, medical field mountains. In our own ministry, Bible school mountain, hospital mountain, word of faith group of school mountain, churches mountain, building mountains, all kinds of television mountains. But look at what God says here. When they become too much more than your personal one, assign it to the nation and assign it to God. Look at your Bible, verse 1. Also, say that with me everybody. Thou son of man, man. say it loud. Say unto the mountains of Israel. Israel. Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? Say yes. Yes. That's where you are reading it from. Anything bigger than you calling, more than your personal affliction. If it comes national affliction, hunger everywhere. Cost of living everywhere. Don't put it in your head and say, it's my trouble for Britain. God says, say it, mountains of Israel. Problems of England. Not rich problem. Not it house us problem. God is teaching you. You also say, you problem of Israel. Divide it to the nation. Say unto it, ye mountains of Israel. Those hear the word. Every mountain that is bigger than me, don't hear me because when I say you will not listen, but hear the word of the Lord. Business, hear the word of the Lord. Marriage, hear the word of the Lord. Home, hear the word of the Lord. School fees, hear the word of the Lord. Cost of living, hear the word of whom? God. Anything that doubts you can't doubt God. So God says, Ezekiel, Say to a mountain, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, because the enemy has said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in our possession. Therefore prophesy, prophesy and say, thus says the Lord God, because they have made you desolate, and swallow you up on every side. Problems swallow you every side. The enemy says, ha ha! This is bigger than him or her. He can't come out of it. God said, when you see a situation that is too hard for you, and your friends are an enemy, and I say, ha ha! He won the first one. He won the second one. This one he cannot win. He said, don't wrestle with that condition. Don't fight it. Don't fight back. See, Say, tell me, say. say. Point your hand to me, say. say. Point your hand to me, say to me, say. say. Point your hand to me and tell me, say. say. Thus says the Lord God, because they have made you desolate and swallowed you up on every side, that ye might be a possession unto the residue of the hidden, and ye are taken up in the lips of talkers and are an infamy of the people. Therefore, ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus said the Lord God to the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers, to the valleys, to the desolate wastes, and to the cities that are forsaken. We became a prayer and derision to the residue of the hidden that are round about. Therefore, thus said the Lord God. Surely, in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the hidden and against all Edomia, which have appointed my land into their possession with the joy of all their heart and despiteful minds to cast it out of a prayer. Prophesy, therefore, concerning the land of Israel and say unto the mountains and to the hills, to the rivers and to the valleys, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I have spoken in my jealousy and my fury. Because ye have borne the shame of the hidden. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, I have lifted up my hand. Surely the hidden that are about you 
they shall hear, bear their shame. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Switch the responsibility to God. Turn the battle from your heart to God's side. Switch it. Turn it. Turn it from what you are bearing to what God has borne. Take it from your head as the heat of your concern. See it with your eyes, but direct it to God. Amen. How do you talk when something hurts you? Do you nod your head and sit down in anguish and cross your leg in this tasteful state and begin to shake it? Oh, Lord God. Oh, I'm finished. You don't finish. When you have faith, faith finish what is finish you. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Yes. When you have faith, turn to Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 16. Turn it for me. Turn it for me. Ch chapter 30, verse 16. 16 and 17. We are not taught how to be coward. We are the head and not the tail. We are winners and not losers. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 16 and 17. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com the world database of Christian preachers to help us reach 100 million people the message continues after this video about anointed you you can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of god preachers prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Is that in your Bible? I say, is that in your Bible? Is that in your Bible? Anything trying to destroy you and devour you and swallow you up. Christianity has exceeded. Amen, amen, amen. You get home three days, you are still trying to get hot rub. To rob your body from jumping in the church with no result. Christianity has exceeded crying when you have need, eyes red, and that need still not met. 
I want you to talk the way this man talk. If Jesus is alive, miracle is still alive. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? If Christ is still your God, Hebrew 13, it says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Somebody say big hallelujah. hallelujah. Your mouth can correct what is wrong. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Your mouth can rectify what is wrong. Your eyes can see evil and your mouth can speak righteousness. Your body can say, I'm sick, while your mouth can say, I'm well. Your eye can say, I'm blind, I'm dumb. While your mouth say, by his stripes, I'm healed. Can I hear you say big hallelujah? hallelujah. Your pocket can say, I'm empty. While your mouth say, money is coming by the grace of God. Don't live by sight. Live by faith. For the just shall live by faith. The day you will believe that everything on earth belongs to your heavenly father. You are asking for some of them. We have given all the car company to Ford. We have given all the air, aircraft company to BOAC. So as far as we are concerned, it's over. Nothing is over when Christ is above it. Amen. I say nothing is over in your life when Christ is over it. Amen. Did I hear you say amen? amen? The reason you are thinking everything is over is because you don't know Christ is above. What is above you? Anything higher than you is still below the feet of Christ. We were not born again to be born. We are born again to be born again. That we may live in peace and joy and happiness. That we may testify the king of glory is alive. And because he lives, we can live also. Can I hear you say one more amen? amen. You can prophesy ahead of time what you want to happen ahead of time and God can bring it to pass with your mouth I'm learning to talk like that I'm learning to say what I bind on earth is bound in heaven what I lose on earth is losing heaven Christianity is not for seasonal use it's for daily use and make the word of God your daily language we are told by the Bible what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we lose on earth is lose in heaven. Even though I'm giving you the testimony of few of the things I've challenged by the authority of God, I can tell you countless thousands that I met. I've seen members in the church take me to their side and say, we have been trying to build this house for 10 years. He never moved. I said, okay, you shall move. Your house, move in Jesus' name. How do you move a building that refused to move cash? How do you start a car that have no battery? By a battery. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Why don't you talk the way Jesus talked? What did Jesus do with the five loaves and two fishes? He took it. Say that everybody. He blessed it. He broke it. He gave it. Why not you behave like that? Take what is above you. Lift it to God. Bless it and release it. And see what God will do with your release. Make words of your mouth efficacious. Let your language turn to I'm loose, I'm not bound. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm blessed, I'm not cursed. I'm light, I'm not darkness. That's why you gather this money. To learn how to talk and say the right words. We cannot be like unbelievers. We go to stores. I watch Christians. You follow them to shopping. They pick a shirt. How much is this shirt? Three pounds. My God. When I was here last week, it was one pound. It has gone up with two pounds. I come back. You go to the next shirt. That one says five pounds. Before you come back, the man who was following you behind, who is not a Christian, had picked it. That is not how we are going to train ourselves to live. We pick a shirt in the store. You say, how much? Three pounds. You say, I can do all things through Christ. That's not, not me. Can I hear you say amen? amen. 
you don't dump it for unbelievers to take it and then you come back, it's gone. You go to restaurants. How much is the plate of food? Seven pounds per plate of food. You go to McDonald's. Swollen beef rotten from the factory. <laughs> How much a heap? One pound. And you come up. <coughs> <laughs> Cheap food. Expensive treatment. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Learn how to act like child of God. Learn. Learn how to. Learn how to believe God. Look at verse, verse 8. We we'll stop at verse 7. Is that in your Bible? God says in verse 7, Surely the hidden that are about you, they shall bear their shame from now. Not you. Verse 8. But ye, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people Israel. For they are at hand to come. Everything that was negative in your life, God said they will now start to bear fruit and spring forth. The, the branches will bear fruit. And the fruit will have seed. And the seed can be used for multiplying. If I were you, I would say big amen to that. Amen. Don't only look for mountain. Look for the valley and look for the rivers and look for how God will change it for you. Look at the next verse 9. Verse 9 says, For behold, I'm for you. I'm for you. God says, I'm for you. Tell your neighbor, God is for you. Say it loud. Don't be afraid. Tell someone next to you, God is for you. It's not only fever that is for us. It's not only sickness that is for us. It's not only hunger that is for us. God says, I'm for you. Come on. I'm for you. When you are tired, I'm for you. When you are down, I'm for you. When you are weak, I'm for you. When you are not well, I'm for you. When you are barren, I'm for you. When the enemy turns against you, I'm for you. That's the word of God to you this morning. And if God be for us, no one can be against us. Say loud, amen. amen. I'm what God says I am. I'm what God says I am. I know I'm willing. I know I'm willing. I'm what God says I am. Come on now. Come on, Caroline. Come on. Come on. Move your legs. Come on now. I'm what God says I am. Say it loud. Watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com.
Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idahosa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God, all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was a Dowser's level of faith, beyond mass uh, explanation. They had faith. Spiritual, a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. Um, I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It, it's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And uh, Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City airport to Kaduna. And I carried 
and it was there he told me in the preaching he said this is my son at the point at that time i didn't really know bishop Edipo. this must have been early in the 80s or something and then many a couple of weeks after bishop Edipo came to me church of god mission sunday evening service and i remember the first message he preached it was on the prodigal son the man brought me out from the dungeon papa idahosa was he was a man full of energy and vision uh, he he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that were the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop Indahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, and God, what they are saying, and God asked him, What do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, Go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Onicha. And we went to put posters all over Onicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform, and, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there, and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, actually I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. He started Benson Idahoja University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. 
And I think for those who were around in Church of God mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain, because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the window, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane would lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Abishoy Daosa. We say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back up. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down, five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way, we would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos, it was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar, and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. When you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are you know uh, he never celebrated mediocrity he never took no for an answer he dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go he was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture 
He was a trailblazer. I remember those days. For example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today, it also started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign wonder anointing and his boldness. I was I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010, and just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, "Oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors." It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me their sticks and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits, and I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take up the spirit that is upon you, and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland. And when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop in Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street, and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. <laughs> and he just stopped, brought his, brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, with it through the crowd. And he came and I said, ah, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> He said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. <laughs> Till this time, it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I said, hey, please, I beg you, 
don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, no, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that, uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpents, to tread upon scorpions, and to raise the dead. And I said, listen, don't make a mockery of yourself. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal that sin. Raise the dead! I said what? I'm like waiting on a job! Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Uh, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes, in the name of Jesus. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's the girl name? I will send it to the I said it's in Walata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I die. When I die, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson in the house. He said, what is happening? He told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she's swallowing there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him, come back to life. My father said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. They take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray with God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. <laughs> that is how I'm a living so today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, In water, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in water, I command you, rise up! I was 
just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Another made bed to me after a year and three months in the womb. So my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wolf, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave birth to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Superpower. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt down and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayer, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? He said, the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I did know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. I have about eight children, two girls and two boys and six girls. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about 10 grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. In 
He no mega jebe, he no mega ta, he jesu megu wese, he no mega ta gu wese. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preacher's pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers' pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. 
and I'll like you to know that he was also my spiritual father. Please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people. Let this video go viral. Remain blessed. Hello, this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa, his early Christian ministry testimony. As a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on a farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Aquas on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a ninth vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as bensi fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call bensi launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he, also, he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, 
and president of Faith Medical Center. He held positions in numerous organizations, including the College of, Bis of Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robert uh, University in Oklahoma. It also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robert University in March 1984. He also received another degree. He also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme Tax. So winning was Idaosa primary concern with a motto Evangelism, our Supreme Tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin in Nigeria, Africa, and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries, all, 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon Frada, Lisa, President of Christ for the Nation, Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, a, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His burden for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attracted upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe, and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop. Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminar have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises 
and that God's miracle provision applies to African as well as to Americans. He believed that African has a part in God's work and African will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion whose ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998 now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor Akbar and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of his son, Reverend E.F.B. Uh, Idaosa, his wife, Margaret 
uh, Idaosa is the current Archbishop of the church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contacts get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.